And so for the dual basis, so, uh, sorry, for the dual space, it turns out we automatically get a basis for free from any basis that we happen to have for the original space. So suppose that uh, V1 through Vn is a basis for our vector space V. Then the uh, dual basis is um, <clears throat> V1 through Vn, where Vj is defined by what it does on the basis of V, namely Vj of Vk is going to be uh, 1 if j is equal to k, or 0 if j is not equal to k. So if you've seen the idea of a characteristic function or indicator function, that's exactly what's going on here. It's equal to 1 where they match, and otherwise it's equal to 0. OK, and so then what we have is the uh, very unsurprising result that the dual basis is a basis, hence the name dual basis. So if we have a basis for V, then V1 through Vm is um, uh, a basis for Vm. OK, so let's see. Um, <clears throat> For the proof, so we'll start with um, independence, proving that it's linearly independent. And so for that, let's start by supposing that we have a uh, linear combination that sums to 0. OK. <clears throat> um, then what do we know? Well, then 0 is, um, and I'm just going to rewrite that thing up above as the sum of aj vj applied to vk, uh, right? So if, uh, if this equation is true right here, it means that a1 v1 plus a n v n is the zero map, which means that if I apply it to anything, including things in my basis, I get zero. All right. So then uh, I can use uh, the definition of a sum of linear maps to say that this is aj vj of vk. And then I can use the um, definition of vj to say that this is going to be, well, let's see. It's going to be zero everywhere where they don't match. So I can imagine there'll be a bunch of zeros. And then there'll be a k. That's the one where j equals k. And then everywhere else will be zeros again. And so this is um, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. where j is not equal to k. All right. Um, and so then where j is equal to k, this one here is actually equal just to 1. So if we look at what shakes out of this whole calculation, it's just exactly a k. Um, and so now instead of uh, proving spanning, Instead, what I'm going to note is that um, since the uh, dimension of v prime is equal to the dimension of v by our uh, previous result, which was actually, what was that? That was uh, proposition 395. This is a basis because we've got a list of n things that's linearly independent in an n-dimensional vector space. And that was uh, 239, if you care to look it up. 
Okay, and then just as a, a final word on the matter, I, I want to point out that we will make this, or we will see this computation repeatedly, uh, that the sum of aj, um, vj, vk is a k. So that is a great one to remember.